Hello everybody, Esther L. Jones here. Painter, ceramicist, music teacher, and all around magical freaking unicorn. And today we're going to be talking about my new process, a fun process that I discovered last summer at IEPS. And I'm going to be reviewing a product that has really moved me forward in this process. And that is golden high flow acrylics so i hope you'll join me for this i'll be doing a voiceover and you can watch me as i start to create this piece which i believe i'm gonna call it celestial we'll see you in a little minute okay let's talk about these supplies i've got the golden high flow acrylics I've got my UART paper because I'll be painting with pastel in the end. And um, I have mixed up a little bit of the paints and you can see I've already done some. But you can see that these high flow acrylics are very, very thin. And they're easily mixable to get the colors that you want. And um, they're perfect for pastelists. Why? Because they don't take up too much tooth on the sanded paper. Taking up tooth on the sanded paper is the bane of um, wet underpainting techniques that we might use as pastelists to give us that uh, nice layered map that will be so helpful to us once we start painting. And I'm a big fan of wet underpaintings. This painting, by the way, is patterned after one that I completed during the International Association of Pastel Societies convention back last June 2022. I took a workshop called the Jam Session. It was a two-day workshop and it was designed by its authors to help you to loosen up and find the creative zone more easily. I loved that workshop and out of it came this specific process that I'm using right here before your eyes. What I'm doing is, um, and I have tweaked that process too. What I'm doing is adding color to my paper with these high flow acrylics. And um, I let a lot just happen. That's the intuitive part. And I'm enjoying just letting color be my muse and following after what it says um, to me to do. I'll be using these uh, extended length brushes because it takes away my tendency to uh, be very detailed. I want to take away that tendency. I'll be using these Neocolor crayons and these Art Graph blocks and Ink Tense blocks to add some black lines and some colored lines uh, that will help me get some depth and some layers and some contrast. And again, you see I'm moving my arm all the way from my shoulder. I am not being precious or detailed. I'm following what looks fun to do and what looks interesting to do. I'm currently using a black art graph. Uh, I think they call them a tailor's disc. And you'll see once I add water that these, they activate with water. So they're super fun. These lines will expand and grow. Uh, this is an ochre or sepia, no, it's not a sepia. It's more like an ochre colored uh, art graph block. As I said, the jam session, ooh, I liked that the um, 
that golden high flow fluorescent yellow gave me a little bit of texture there that the disc went over the art graph disc this um, workshop that I went to uh, really emphasized um, getting out of your logical brain getting out of thinking so carefully and precisely about making your art. This is a black neo color crayon. It also activates with water. Um, it does act a little bit differently than the art graph. Um, it tends to stay a little bit more formed, um, but it does react with the water. And uh, we just had a ball in that class. There was always music going. There were always things getting us out of our comfort zone. Okay, I have created a longer brush so that I have to get back from it by taping one brush to another. And you can see, again, I'm not being precious. I want that paint to do what it wants to do. Uh, I want to give it all the room that I can to um, show me the painting that's going to come out of it. I know this sounds really woo-woo, but uh, I absolutely love following what happens naturally. So I don't think of it as woo-woo, I think of it as natural. So um, whatever physics and um, the movement of the paint are going to do is usually quite delightful. So I'm going to trust it and I am going to um, spread this stuff around and as you see as I use the spray water on it, it activates. Now look at that muted color that just happened. I'm kind of excited about that color even though um, some of us might think that it's ugly. What it does is give us um, our brain a place for um, uh, our eyes to rest in a painting. So I am not upset about that at all. Let the colors mix. Let them do what colors do. And uh, I'm using this slightly smaller brush. Um, it's just as long but it's smaller on the tip uh, just to give me um, a different character of the lines and and I'm really enjoying what I'm doing. I'm letting it go. I'm not worrying about what happens. I don't have a vision in my mind for what this will be even though um, it is based on the study that I did in the workshop. Uh, I don't have an outcome for this planned in my head. So I'm finishing this up um, and then here in a minute I will let it dry and we'll come back with it on the easel. Yeah, it's ready. Okay, I've got it up on the easel now and I have pastels and I'm adding them in already. The pastel that I'm using right now is a Jack Richardson um, block pastel. They had them at the iApps convention and I got a couple boxes of them and I absolutely love them. They're extremely soft. They have some super intense dark colors as well as some light colors. And the block is very easy to work with on a big surface. I really enjoy it. I also get really neat lines with them. So I am reinforcing the dark areas of this painting. And while I'm doing that, uh, let me just go ahead and tell you about these Golden High Flow acrylics. I had received a couple of bottles of the Golden High Flow acrylics at one time. In, uh, I think it was uh, an art snack box or something like that and they were fluorescent. I get a blue and I get a yellow a fluorescent and uh, I didn't really find much use for them. 
uh, back at that time. So they've been in my collection of art things for a long time. But uh, once I came home from the convention, then I, I wanted to find some more ways to loosen up. And I do love a wet underpainting. I always have. And I don't know if that will ever change. So I used them a bit. And, and I just loved how they didn't fill up the tooth, but they had nice color. And then it gave great layers uh, underneath my pastels. So um, then I went ahead, uh, I ran out of another product that I was using for that as well and decided to replace it with a golden high flow acrylic bottle and I bought a darker maroon or rose or something like that and I fell in love with it. And then I went ahead and purchased 20 uh, colors some uh, one set of transparent and one set of what they just call high flow acrylics. And uh, I assume they're slightly more opaque than the transparent ones. Uh, th there were a couple of, um, uh, there was a little bit of overlap. So I, so I have two bottles of some colors, but um, and then, I, of course, I still have the fluorescent yellow. All right, I'm showing you right now these fluorescent pastels from um, Diane Townsend, um, which I also treated myself to after IEP so that I could um, scratch my super intense sparkly color itch and I'm adding them in uh, to, to, balance, to, to add some intensity, some brilliance in. What I discover, and you'll see that happen as I'm adding in pastel, is that that uh, yellow fluorescent high flow acrylic um, actually made, uh, gave me a problem. It, um, actually formed a coating over the tooth of the paper. None of the other colors did that. Only the yellow. And uh, so you'll see that I have to go in later, and we'll talk about it then, and, and remedy that because my pastels won't go over that slick surface. Anyhow, the high flow acrylics, um, the high flow is really important to me because I want to let the color loose. I want the color to flow and to spread and to um, do wacky weird things that it does. And then, um, then I will follow that with my pastels. And so um, with the advantages of it not making, that's what I'm tapping that right there because my pastel won't uh, go over it because it's too slick. Um, uh, so the, the, the high flow acrylics are really nice. The transparent ones are not too transparent, but they are lovely. Uh, I don't mind having that transparent color because as you see, an awfully lot of this underpainting, it gets covered because I'm following that color with my pastels. So, um, okay, so now here I'm getting my clear gesso and I'm going to add it on to the places where that yellow uh, fluorescent high flow acrylics um, made the paper slick. And um, what's cool about clear gesso is that it has a tooth to it once it dries. It, it, ha it will give you some texture. And you can use um, that to make your own pastel paper if you are out. It um, really works very nice. So um, 
just adding that in to add back some texture where I can get some pastel on top of that. I want to add pastel to it because I am a pastelist and I love pastels. And if your piece is not 80% pastel on the surface, then it does not qualify for a lot of pastel competitions. So I use that underpainting, which is delightful and fun to do and gets me excited to serve as the basis for my creations and then I add my beloved pastel on top. As you uh, may have wondered, I uh, still, let me restate this for uh, you. I do not have a vision in mind for this. This is not a thing. If it turns into a thing, it was not one that I planned, and um, I love working this way. I love working intuitively and abstractly. I also enjoy making uh, the more representational paintings, but I'm just delighted when something happens that I didn't plan. I do have a goal of getting some real depth, especially up there uh, in the top area, that's part of what I'm copying, if you will, um, from the previous uh, painting, the workshop painting. I want to get that depth of layers up there in all those blues and pinks and purples and a little bit of yellow. So I am continuing that process as the, uh, the, the clear gesso dries on those other pieces. Adding some uh, darker color uh, on the outer edges will push those uh, edges back a little bit into the distance and give me some depth in this painting because even with abstract, uh, you want to create some depth. All right, that's that right there. I remembered I've got to put some uh, gesso on that. Um, and I've got to wipe off some of the pastel that I tried to get on there first. So here goes some more clear gesso. It goes on white, but it does clear up afterwards. And um, again, I'm just following my intuitive process. Um, I personally have always struggled with doing things intuitively, but this is, that jam session really gave me a lot of help in getting that going. So if you're a pastelist, I hope you'll take that session sometime. I hope you really enjoyed watching me create this piece. Here is Celeste in its final form. And uh, if you've got questions or comments, I sure would like to hear them. Thanks for watching.